People are saying that in the United States, the market is waiting for the new Tesla Semi. Now, I know there's some um, pushback against this, but the truth is the Tesla Semi is going to be mass produced next year. And this will be a game changer for the US trucking industry in many ways. However, here in Australia, we also have some pretty epic new semis coming. In fact, one has just been revealed for sale in Australia right now. Another one's coming very soon, which will help to get rid of some of these absolutely rubbish diesel trucks on the roads, which I think are a safety nightmare. And also these are great for the drivers. Much, much better to drive, much better also for the, the air, for reducing pollution. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans, you're watching The Electric Viking. Back in 2022, Scania, a Swedish commercial vehicle manufacturer, unveiled a new line of electric semi-trucks for regional operations with a 624 kilowatt hour battery. It's coming to Australia after receiving approval for three different versions. And this was first spotted by Roland Zappadow and shared on X, says The Driven. A 500 kilowatt electric motor powers the Scania NGG series trucks, which are available in three configurations. These variants' gross vehicle mass ranges from 29 tons to 31 tons. Tear weight is around 12 tons for each version. So as you can see, this is not the biggest trucks you can get, the biggest trucks you see on the road. It's not quite the size of a Tesla Semi, but it's getting to that direction. Not much has been said about the range from these 624 kilowatt hour battery packs, but it looks like the range will be approximately 350 kilometers. So 350 kilometers of range is you know, not amazing, but it's not bad. And it would be suitable for many trucking runs. Charging can be done actually quite quick in only 90 minutes, which is pretty impressive. And the reason it charges at 375 kilowatt. Now I should point out though, that in China, uh, they now have charging stations that are capable of 1.5 megawatts, 1,500 kilowatts. So you can imagine how fast you can charge a, a large truck in China. Those charges will come as well. They'll come to the West, they'll come to places like Australia. And I believe the United States are also installing one megawatt charges. So you can see how electric trucks won't be, the problem won't be charging speeds, that's for sure. So for many operators, the Driven says, these trucks will be charged at the trucking depot, ensuring adequate charging equipment planning is done prior to taking delivery of these trucks. And remember, you can't drive a truck for more than, I believe, four hours. So really in the future, when we have trucks capable of around 500 kilometers of range, you'll do your four hours of driving, have your break, have your, um, your meal, uh, have, get your, your allocated one hour off driving. That's when you'll charge it and then you'll get back in and it'll be ready to go again. These trucks include zero emission transport, including the power takeoff unit, which is used to divert the power from the battery to power hydraulic or mechanical equipment on the vehicle as well. So back in 2023, Scania were targeting 50% of their vehicle sales to be battery powered by 2030. And what that means is we're gonna see more and more electric trucks on the road. Last year, Winrose, another electric truck manufacturer, showed off its new new truck, which looks very similar to Tesla's Semi. Now this truck has a 729 kilowatt hour battery and range apparently of more than 670 kilometers when loaded with a 49 ton load. That's a pretty big load. So that shows you that really the future is here. That truck is meant to be, I believe, on the market here in Australia within the next 12 months. So a 729 kilowatt hour battery gives it range of 670 kilometers. So that's about four, more than 400 miles, towing 49 tons, a, tri a load of 49 tons. Now this, like I said before, the, the key reason for this being so much, uh, getting more range from a battery pack, not much bigger, is aerodynamics. The Winrose Semi is much more aerodynamically efficient than this Scania truck. As you can see, the Scania truck looks like a brick on the road and the air is just going to hit the front of that thing and it's going to be a major impediment. So aerodynamics are important for cars as well as trucks. Now, Riz from The Driven has provided this report and I just want to say thanks to Riz and g'day mate, I hope you had a good trip in China. Riz has just gone to, and just gotten back I think from the Shanghai Auto Show 
Now, guys, if you want to see more of this, this information, I'll put a link to The Driven in the description below. And thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Guys, I know that I know many of you are, are sick and tired of me saying that these automakers are lying, not all of them, but many of them, are lying about the aerodynamic or how aerodynamic their cars actually are. I probably said this at least 50 times, and I know it sounds ridiculous. However, there's a viral story going on right now. It's being reported by hundreds of media publications saying, actually, this might be true, possibly. A Chinese blogger with 2 million followers has tested one of these cars, which has similar claims to other cars, and found that the aerodynamic drag coefficient was completely made up. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Guys, great to have you with us. So what is this story actually about? Well, a Chinese car maker is now facing a backlash after a viral video claims it lied about its EV's drag coefficient, Avatar. Now, Avatar is um, a premium EV brand, which is actually selling fairly well, but it's owned by Chang'an Automobile. So Chang'an, uh, a Chinese state-owned automobile manufacturer headquartered in China, and they're actually a pretty large conglomerate. They, they put out, they built and sold 2.6 million cars in 2023. So it gives you an idea of just how big this company actually are. Drag coefficients, um, for some reason, don't get much attention, but I often talk about them in my videos and I talk about how manufacturers make these wild claims, which are generally just complete nonsense. I don't think they actually test them most of the time. I mean, I could be wrong, but I would say 90% of manufacturers are just flat out lying about the CD of their cars. And guys, I wouldn't be saying that if I was being sponsored by these car brands because they're going to be angry at me for saying this stuff, but they are just making this stuff up. They are. Or they're getting the numbers and they're going, oh, make it sound 20% better. Our marketing division, make it sound 20% better. Let's do that. Anyhow, a low CD can improve a car's range, right? Obviously. In fact, it does improve a car's range. The lower the CD, the better range you're going to get, the better efficiency. It's enormous. People don't understand how big of a difference this is and how incredibly crucial this is to how much range you get from a car. Because I've done a little bit of bicycle racing, I've studied this enormously. And guys, when you're trying to go from say 30 kilometers an hour to 31 kilometers an hour, it's a, you know, a bit harder. When you try to go for 40 kilometers an hour to 41 kilometers an hour, it's quite a bit harder. The difference between 40 and 41 is much bigger than the difference between 30 and 31 because of the air you're trying to displace. 